Hello everyone, I'm Ian from Creative Visuals and this is take two on this video because I literally just recorded it and it came out to being like 30 minutes long and ain't nobody gonna sit through that. So I'm gonna record it again here. So A60 set 500 successor, let's see. I'm gonna go over the leaks, rumors, everything we've learned. I made a video about this a while ago and you guys seemed really interested about it. So I'm gonna go over it again because even in the time since I made that video, a lot of leaks have come out. So we're gonna go over it once again with all these new leaks. So let's get right into this. Okay, so one important thing that I have to go over before starting this video so you guys can understand what the heck I'm talking about is the fact that there may be two crop sensor mirrorless camera releases from Sony. One of which being the successor to the A6500 for consumers and prosumers and the other being a professional crop sensor mirrorless camera. Sony stated in a recent press conference or something with someone, I don't know who it was from Sony, I wish I knew them but I don't. One day I will. Those are my goals. Anyways, uh, they said that there is room in the market and a need for a professional crop sensor mirrorless camera. I'm looking at the Fuji X-T3. Anyways, they said that that is what they're aiming to produce, so a professional one. And from what I've seen in the leaks, it almost looks like, like I said, there may be two models, the professional one and then the consumer one, one of which will keep the rangefinder style and the other one will go to more towards the A7, A9 style because, well, the professional one is rumored to be like a mini A9. So that is leading us into the design. So the professional one, like I said, will have the viewfinder in the middle of the uh, body rather than the side, like this rangefinder style. So having that there will lead it to be more of a professional camera. If you think about it, all the professional full frame cameras have the viewfinder in the middle. So this um, this line is the rangefinder style with it on the side, keeps it portable and all, but it would be more professional and it would be in line with what they're saying, a professional crop sensor camera. So with that comes a lot of benefits, which I would go over. And one of the huge ones is the fact that they could move this bloody SD card somewhere else so that you don't have it on the bottom with the battery, because that's just horrible. They need it on the side. Put it on the side, Sony. I am I could go on your design team right now and put the SD card on the side, and I, it, I could do wonders. But anyways, moving on. Um, the next thing is that viewfinder. So on both models, we should see an increase in viewfinder resolution. So this one on the A6500 has a 2359K uh, resolution EVF and the A9, which the professional one is rumored to be like a mini version of, has a 3686K EVF, so we should see something kind of in between there, some kind of resolution bump, because we can't go wrong with more resolution. I myself have had no problems with this. It gets a bit fuzzy if you go up to 120 frames per second for the refresh rate, but you don't need it there. If you're going up in the refresh rate, you have to get rid of some kind of quality. Um, but at 60 frames per second, I've had no issues with this whatsoever, but resolution is resolution. Next up is the screen. So the A6500, has a crap screen. There is no way around this. This thing you cannot see in direct sunlight. You need to be in a dark room to see this thing if you are shooting in 4K or 1080p at 120 frames per second. And if you bought this camera for video, you are. And the reason that I'm saying that is because with this crappy screen, you have to have an external monitor if you wanna get your shot framed correctly in those frame rates and qualities. So what's the point of having this super small portable camera if you're gonna add a huge um, external monitor to it that's gonna just completely get rid of the portability factor. They need a better screen, there is no way around that. So both of them, both the professional and consumer, maybe there's just one, either way, whatever the next crop sensor mirrorless camera is from Sony has to have a better screen than the A6500. People just aren't gonna buy it. This is a bad screen, I'm sorry, but I understand it dims to reduce overheating, but just make the camera a bit bigger. We're, we're okay with that if it's gonna mean that we can actually see what we're recording. So next up is on that touch screen, we should see some touch interface for the menus because right now it doesn't work. Like, look at that. That could be, that could be a perfect touch screen menu, but nope, it only works for touch to focus. So you can see probably focus somewhere on me there, wherever I was tapping. But yeah, they need to add some better menus to these. Sony gets a lot of crap about their menus. Like there are literally videos roasting their menus. Like they are so bad. And I'm not gonna stand here. Well, maybe I will stand here and roast their menus. Next up, more about the screen. 
they need to make one of them with a fully articulating screen. They need that. This is going straight up against the X-T3 and it doesn't have a fully articulating screen. People don't like that. They need to make a fully articulating screen. We don't need no more of this 45 and 90 degree crap. They have um, the professional line. I understand if they make the professional version of this, the professional crop sensor camera have just the, the same style, I'd be okay with that. I wouldn't be too upset. But if there are two models and there's one that is a successor to the A6500 retaining this rangefinder style, it needs a fully articulating screen if it wants anyone to buy it. This is this just can't do. On a camera this size, they did it on the A5100 and yes, it didn't have a viewfinder, but Sony, think about what you've done. You can put a fully articulating screen. Heck, put it flipping down. This one could flip down right here if they designed it that way. Nothing's in the way, nothing's blocking it. And then if you're vlogging, it'll look like you're looking at the lens. Just make a flip out screen. Make a flip and flip out screen. Okay, so now with all that out of the way, the next most important thing about pretty much every camera is that sensor. So this one, 24 megapixel, I'm pretty sure it's front side illuminated, but if I'm wrong about that, I'll put it up. Anyways, the next one is rumored to have either a same 24 or 26 megapixel sensor, Fuji X-T3, which this one is obviously going to bash against like brutally is the uh 26 megapixel sensor from sony so seeing it on this one the next sony crop sensor one would not surprise me at all and that 24 to 26 megapixel range is like the sweet spot for low light versus quality on these crop sensor bodies uh they did release a 31 megapixel sensor but we're not i'm not expecting to see that maybe if we really crossed our feet, maybe they would put it into the professional version and keep the 26 megapixel one for the consumer A6500 successor. But either way, I'm looking, prob we're probably, we should be looking forward to a 26 megapixel one. Don't get your hopes up about that 31 megapixel one. And we're not looking at a global shutter either, sadly. They, it's just not time. The, the sensors are not ready for that uh, global shutterness. So. so next up, improved in-body image stabilization. I really like the fact that a camera this small can have in-body image stabilization, but comparing it to the GH5, this thing doesn't even look like it has in-body image stabilization. Like seriously, the GH5 has some amazing stabilization. And yes, smaller sensor, bigger body. I understand the logistics of why that works that way, but I would be completely fine with um, making this camera a bit bigger if it would have better in-body image stabilization. Because these, these cameras are aimed at photographers and video, and especially this one is really aimed at video. If they add better in-body image stabilization, everyone is going to be happy about that. Moving on, autofocus. This one has amazing autofocus. We don't need to really, they don't need to improve on that. If they do, so be it. We're, we'll be happy, probably won't see a difference because this thing is already lightning fast, like boom focused like i just took like three pictures of you just like that um the focus on this is really good it's got a 493 i'm pretty sure uh point autofocus system the a9 which this one is rumored to be like a mini version of has 693 points so a bit more there but either way the autofocus on this is already like killer next up frame per second shooting so we're looking at 11 frames per second on the a6500 the a9 has 20 frames per second and what they do to achieve that is they have a stacked cmos sensor and there are rumors of that on this professional one a stacked cmos sensor but at the same time it's kind of iffy either way we should see somewhere between 12 and 20 frames per second for burst shooting uh, i've seen rumors at both of these spe at both of these marks so maybe my thinking might be is that the professional one will have the 20 frames per second and the consumer one will have the 12 makes sense an extra frame per second but anyways for most people um I think we're good where we're at. Maybe a bigger buffer, but either way, uh, for the frames per second, I could see them increasing it for the professional one, but not by too much for the consumer one as I've never really, there's been a few times I've used it, but it's more of a like, look how fast my camera can shoot sort of thing rather than I actually use this. But there are, I can see lots of places where many people would actually use it. So more frames per second, good. So next up is the shutter. So this one has a 1 4,000th shutter, which is pretty standard. Um, we've seen leaks for 1 6,000th and 1 8,000th. Once again, my thinking, 1 8,000th for the professional, 1 6,000th for the consumer. Either way, an increase in both would be 
pretty pretty nice. Um, the only time I would ever use that is if I'm taking pictures of a hummingbird, maybe. Everything else, like one four thousandth of a second, is still really bloody fast. So going up to one six thousandth or one eight thousandth is just kind of what professional cameras do, just because they can. So maybe the professional version one eight thousandth and the consumer one six thousandth makes sense to me. Next up, video. This thing has to have four K sixty. Um, Fuji XT three has four K sixty. If this thing even wants to butt heads with it at all, they need to have. 4K60 on the next uh, crop sensor mirrorless camera. If it's aimed at professionals, I can see them doing that. The 1080p uh, started it all. 1080p 30 frames per second was the standard, then 1080p 60, and then 4K came in. This thing was right off the bat, the 4K camera, and then uh, it's starting to come in, the 4K, and now we're going up to the 4K60 as the new standard. It's there. It's, it's, it's early on the 4K60, but eventually it will be the standard. So they might jump right on that horse before everyone else and get a 4K60 camera out there, kind of like Fuji did. Now to go along with these higher frame rates, um, they do need to improve their bit rate. Uh, Sony cameras are always 100 megabits per second for the 4K. And uh, really comparing them to things like the Fuji X-T3 and the Canon EOS R like that are shooting 400 megabits per second, the quality difference, like Sony's doing a good job with whatever the heck they're doing. But I think if they're shooting at 4K at 60 frames per second, they're just, I don't think there's a way around putting up the bit rate unless you want your qual the quality to like decrease quite a bit. Um, yeah, I think a higher bit rate would be very much appreciated, especially if this next leak is true, which is 1080p at 180 frames per second. I'm looking at the GH5, see? They're just kind of, I want a little bit of that Fuji, you want a little bit of that Panasonic, and they're putting the camera together here. Uh, Sony knows what they're doing. <laughs> um, so 180 frames per second on 1080p, they need to up the bit rate because 100 megabits per second at 120p kind of, it's kind of mushy on the A6500. I'm kind of, I like it because it can shoot that frame rate, but at the same time, it's, it's kind of mushy. You have to sharpen it up and I don't want to do that. Just having more bit rate, get that footage looking better at 120 frames per second and they need it for 4K60. No way around that. They need a higher bit rate if they don't want it to look like 1080p at 60. So higher bit rate, higher frame rate, higher quality. So next up is better SD card placement. I talked about this before. Get it out of the bottom of the camera. Like when this thing's on a tripod, you are just screwed. <laughs> you're, it's just, it's, you're not getting it out until you take it off. They need to put it on the side over here. Maybe if they make it like the A7 style, it'll have a bigger body EVF in the middle. It would make sense to put it on the side. Now there are rumors of possibly two. They'd probably do the same thing that they did with the A7 III and have one fast one, one slow one. Either way, I can see professionals. If this is a professional CMOS sensor, crop sensor camera, like they said, uh, having two SD card slots would be kind of standard at this point. Um, as well as that, if the A6500 successor gets some kind of change to the body at all, I would hope that they'd move the SD card just because that's annoying down there, but I think they could probably get away with it down there. Maybe it just annoys me. I don't know. Does it? Does this? Does this SD card placement annoy you? Let me know down in the comments. I don't know if I'm just picky. You should see micro USB switched to um, USB C just because. Well, you know Marcus Brownlee, USB C all the things. They this applies to cameras too. So USB C there. I'm. It's, it doesn't matter. If I want to put it in and know it's going in. I don't want to look at it and choose. I know that's another little pet peeve of mine, but having USB-C is just nice. Future-proof it, just get it done. Next up, headphone jack. They need a uh, some type of way to monitor audio. The Fuji has it, the a7 III has it. They need to get that in there. This thing is aimed at video shooters and hybrid shooters, but especially at um, video shooters. So having a way to monitor audio without using a dongle, like. I don't want to use a dongle on my camera. I do that with my MacBook. I do not want to use a dongle with my camera. Um, having that on there would be very nice. So moving on to fast charging, uh, it would be nice to have that. Either way, especially for the A6500 successor, the smaller one, they do most likely uh, want to keep the way that you can charge the camera while it's recording because that's really bloody handy. I'm, I use that quite a bit actually when I'm shooting long things. And yes, it has to do with the crappy batteries in this. Speaking of batteries, the professional version with the A7 design, A9 design, whatever it may be, if it has a bigger body, they need to put a bigger battery. This thing's battery holds it back. This thing's screen holds it back. The overheating held it back. A lot of things held this camera back and they need to address these 
and make it so that it can compare to the Fuji X-T3 and this thing will dominate. Um, the professional version will most likely have the new batteries from Sony, the NPFZ100 batteries, the bigger ones that last a long time rather than these little things. Like I have four of these, so I can see for the A6500 successor, them keeping the same battery style if they wanna keep the cameras this teeny tiny. But for the professional one that will most likely be a bigger crop sensor camera with an A7 design, I could see them putting bigger batteries in it. If they don't, that's gonna hold them back a lot. Pricing, release date. Pricing, just thinking about it, if they price it at $2,000, I've seen leaks for that. Why, are they, why would they do that? The A7 III is $2,000. You get a full frame camera, just an astonishing value. You can't price a crop sensor camera that. Yes, that high is, that's just too high for a crop sensor camera. Nobody's gonna buy it. I'm gonna say it's gonna be around the Fuji X-T3. Probably, we're looking at somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 US dollars for the body. We have heard some rumors about a new um, kit lens, 16 or 18 to 70 or something. So having that extra focal range on there would be nice. Maybe it could get rid of some chromatic abbreviation and be a bit sharper. So that would be nice to have a new kit lens. Finally, last but not least, the release date. This is all over the place. And I'm gonna tell you the truth, I have no idea when it's coming out. Um, <laughs> I don't think anyone does. It's kind of, first it was coming out back at Fo Photokina, then it was coming out um, this month, and then somebody said it was coming out before Christmas, but um, now I think it's somewhere in March next year. But either way, we should see it in the first quarter of 2019 at the very latest. They need to get that thing out there before the Fuji X-T3 just takes over everything. Any longer, I understand they stopped their launch when the X-T3 came out and kind of blew everything out of the water. But it lacks in-body image stabilization and it lacks a... Sorry about that. Flip out screen. So having those two things on the next crop sensor mirrorless camera from Sony can really make this thing just take off. So with that out of the way, let me know Let me know down below what you guys think about the next uh, crop sensor cam from Sony. Once again, take all this with a grain of salt. I'm just some guy making videos. It's stuff that interests me, hopefully it interests you too. If you don't like it, don't watch it. If you like it, subscribe maybe. Put, press the little bell. Press that like too, it really helps. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in my next one. Keep your fingers crossed. That professional crop sensor camera, 4K60 flip out screen. We're looking at a beauty. Take care, everyone.